is the GIS News Hour for Thursday, 2nd September. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, Finance Minister feels vindicated that he did not rush to sign agreement with Siwang One World. Some regrets with NI's decision to write up the scheme's debt with British American and Senators asking for amendment to bill to regulate credit unions and other cooperative societies. Those were the headlines. Details are next. students today to compete for the skilled job market of tomorrow is the new thrust of the Ministry of Education and Human Resources Development. According to a 2008 World Bank report, Grenada's future economic growth depends on the creation of a new capacity workforce to include skilled labor. This means that it is essential for students to be certified in skilled areas. Curriculum refocus is the answer. This is one of the Ministry's main priorities for 2010, working with students, parents and teachers to deliver the quality education and the demand for a new emerging job market. Refocusing the curriculum is aimed at providing academic and personal development support in the areas of technical and tourism education, citizenship skill and personal development skills. It is imperative that you and all stakeholders work together to achieve a more holistic approach to education. Come on board, let's build our nation together. Welcome back, viewers. Finance Minister the Honorable Nazim Burke says one of his biggest regrets in their dialogue with Korean investment company Siwang One World is the fact that the Prime Minister's signature was affixed to a memorandum of understanding signed when company officials visited Grenada in May. During a news conference at the Grenada Trade Center on Thursday morning, Minister Burke pointed to a major positive being the fact that he did not rush to sign any agreement with the company. As it stands now, he says they cannot say that they are going to sign alternate documents presented to company officials since Grenada does not want to get into business with possible crooks and criminals. This comes following reports that at least three people with ties to the company were arrested on suspicion of fraud. During a news conference held last week, Minister Burke and Vincent Roberts explained to members of the media that while Siwang One World presented an attractive offer for investment opportunities in the country, they had some concerns with the document presented to the Grenada delegation, which visited Taiwan in August, and so the minister advised that they not sign it. During a news conference at the Grenada Trade Center on Thursday morning, Minister Burke said when the alternate document was prepared, Grenada asked for specific information like the company's corporate history and track record, the origin of the funds, and its main representatives among others before any agreement could be signed. We remained in correspondence with the two gentlemen, Christopher de Riggs and Vincent Roberts, who traveled to Taiwan. We remain in correspondence with them on an ongoing basis. We sensed a pressure from the other side to sign that document that they were presented. I took the document to several lawyers, at least three lawyers, including the Attorney General's office, and asked them to evaluate the document. I referred the document to some friends in a friendly country's embassy that they can arrange to assist us with an evaluation. We arranged for Another company, one of the largest security investment, uh, security uh, investigation, uh, invest, uh, investigation companies in the world to assist us. We shared information and the feedback that we were getting was not very good. We were mentioned, uh, about eight or nine different companies had been mentioned to us which we were not aware of at the time that we initially met Suwang World. We discovered eight or nine other affiliate companies. And the searches that we began to do suggested to us that we should not sign any more documents or any documents binding Grenada until we had a deeper and better appreciation for, um, for those persons. The two gentlemen who traveled to Taiwan came back to Grenada 
with a document signed by signed by the Taiwanese persons saying this is what they want us to sign could we please sign it and now we have until the 25th of August to sign that document our position was when we looked at that document we were not satisfied that that document best represented Grenada's interests and I gave clear instructions we are not to sign that doc document his one regret though is that the Prime Minister signed the Memorandum of Understanding with company officials in May. Minister Burke, who was not in Grenada at the time, says in hindsight that should not have been done, although there was nothing legally binding that would have caused embarrassment to the country if the deal flopped. He adds that there needs to be a protocol on what the Prime Minister signs and doesn't sign. Could we have avoided it, we would have ensured at that time that the Prime Minister who signed this agreement um, did not participate in that signing at all. On, on, in hindsight, I think it was a mistake to have the Prime Minister of the country sign an MOU with a private company. It is not the practice and it should not be done and we must admit and accept responsibility for that. But we will say to you that in signing the MOU, we were quite confident that we were not going to put Grenada into any trap. News surfaced about two days ago that Chinese officials had arrested at least two members of the group, including one Miss Pak, who had visited Grenada in May. Minister Burke says while many were clamoring for government to jump at the opportunity being presented by C11 World, he is happy that they did due diligence. We were accused of sitting on the deal, but we stand by our position. We will not sign any documents. And today, we will not sign any documents unless Grenada is satisfied that the documents it signs that will bind the people of this country are in the people's best interest. Today, I feel vindicated. I feel absolutely vindicated that I did the right thing. That we must stand up and insist that we do not sign documents that will compromise the interests of the state. The finance minister says when the MOU was signed, neither Grenada nor C11 World was clear on what projects will be financed, but by the time the two-man delegation of Chris De Riggs and Vincent Roberts returned from Taiwan, it became a bit clearer what projects could be financed. There were nine areas. These included the rebuilding and refurbishment of the athletic stadium, building the Simoon Cultural Center, refurbishment and expansion of the Lauriston Airport in Karaku, and the strategic injection of capital installed private sector projects. He also shared with the media the impression they had that they were being pressured somewhat by the company to come to Taiwan by August 19, although they kept insisting that the meeting be held either in Korea or the UK where the company says it has an agent. Minister Burke says there are many lessons to be learned from this experience. I regret that um, the Prime Minister was uh, involved in the signing of the MOU. I do not believe that uh, prime ministers of a country should um, sign on to an MOU of that nature with a private company. It's really, in a sense, you don't need that. It's not necessary to bring the prime minister into that kind of scenario at all. That could e easily have been signed by any functionary within the ministry. Yes. So that is one lesson I think coming out that we need to have very clear protocols within the government as to what documents uh, will be signed by the state and what level officials should really be signing those documents. I think we need to develop a clear protocol uh, to deal with those issues because you don't want confusion and you don't want to do anything that can potentially compromise the integrity of the government or the nation. Yes? The second important lesson I think that comes out of it is that um, it's a positive lesson. We must engage in due diligence. That at the end of the day, no matter how difficult things are for you, desperation is the worst companion for a desperate person. You must not be driven to a state of desperation unless you die. And I think it is fair to say that it is also, I've learned and it reinforces my conviction that to succeed in business, you have to be prepared to say yes about some things. And you also must have the courage to say no. You must be prepared to say yes on some things because if you say no on everything, you will never have a deal. And while we wondered about the wisdom of going to Taiwan, 
we had to say yes so that we can explore if there were any possibilities there. But we had to have the courage to say no when we felt there were circumstances in there that did not adequately protect the interests of the government and people of Grenada. Former Finance Minister Senator Anthony Boson raised the subject of Siwang One World during a meeting of the Senate on Thursday. He says the proposal by a company to inject at least $2.5 billion into Grenada's economy should have been enough to raise suspicions. Senator Boson also took issue with the composition of the delegation that visited Taiwan in August. You're dealing with government projects, but your delegation comprised of someone in contract, not a tenured civil servant, and the PRO of your party going on Taiwan to do government business. Madam President, that cannot be transparent. Why send the PRO of the party to transact government business? Where is the permanent secretary or the deputy permanent secretary or senior civil servant or someone from the legal fraternity? Because you, you need legal advice. And that again, Madam President, is a source of concern. The composition of the delegation. Senator Boson says in a situation like this, due diligence should never be overlooked. He was quick to point out though that in the past, due diligence was not always done and advised the government to learn from the mistakes of the past administration. Finance Minister Nazim Burke has repeatedly said that due diligence was followed, hence his decision not to sign any document before they were sure that Grenada would benefit from the deal. And responding to Senator Boson's statements, Education Minister Senator Franca Bernadine commended the government for acting prudently on the matter. They've looked and they've seen and they've recognized, I mean, I don't know what you call the major blunder there, I think they went, looked around, didn't send a minister, didn't send a permanent secretary, didn't send any senior officer at this level, but indeed prudently um, selected two persons, one in government, one out of government, who went, walked around the deal, took a good look at it, and came back and said, there's nothing here for us to sign. So while there are issues, as you say, we could learn from our experiences, I want to commend the government for its prudence in not committing anything further. And as I said before, I dare say it might have been different, judging from the history. Don't want to make any assumptions here. I also want to point out that a memorandum of understanding, you must keep in mind what it's about. Okay, and examine it carefully, because these are things we spend a lot of time thinking about. We all sign them, and I know that I spend a lot of time considering them. And really what you're doing in many cases is opening up your opportunity there to continue further dialogue, right through to certain levels. But it, it doesn't carry the weight. Certainly does not carry the weight that one would do if you signed a contract or signed in. And I am pleased to note that perhaps what you describe as a major blunder, and I look with interest at such a statement, and I'm quoting your own words here, and sully the name of Grenada as being a wise step to withdraw while you can. Smell the rat and move back. Junior Culture Minister Senator Ali Gill also